we have 19 uh, participants who have joined in already let's just wait for a few more minutes yes should we wait for a minute yeah let's wait for a couple of minutes sure Can the teams actually uh, post to the chat? I'm not seeing any response from any of the attendees. Yes, uh, they should be able to write in the chat. Uh, folks, can somebody write back to Professor Dev so that he knows that you can write? Great. Lovely. Thanks, Gayatri. I hope you can hear me. Always respond using the chat, please, because your mics will be muted. Great. Lovely. OK. Hi, Lokesh. From Udaipur. That's lovely. Kunjpreet, where are you? Yes. Hi, Girish. Anju. Saji. Lovely. We are still waiting for a couple of minutes. We have uh, 34 participants now. Okay, Saji, nice to hear you from Bangalore. Okay, you're welcome, Sajid Bagis.
Uh, did the participants have to use any password to log in? Can anybody respond? What password did you use? Sir, password is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> is that you, Manvi? No, that's control room, Professor Dev. Okay. Manvin is going crazy scheduling things. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should get started. Uh, Professor Puran, Tanya. Uh, yeah, yes, Professor Dilip. I think we have. Uh, yeah, I think we should start. Okay, great. Let me. I. Yeah, let me do the uh, initiation for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining in for Himalayan Startup Trek, and congratulations to uh, all the teams that have been selected. Uh, like every year, we like to start with a master class because uh, the primary motivation for all the teams is to pitch and to you know get the support that we are providing. Uh, and for us also, the primary incentive is to find the right teams that we can support at IIT Mandi Catalyst. Uh, my name is Dr. Puran Singh and I am faculty in charge at IIT Mandi Catalyst. Uh, and uh, uh, let me welcome Professor Pringi Dev uh, formally uh, and thank him for agreeing to conduct this master class for all the teams. Uh, the objective of this class is to help uh, prepare you uh, for the pitch that you'll be doing. And all the uh, tips that Professor Dave will give you, uh, you should try and use those tips while you pitch, uh, you know, today or tomorrow, day after, whenever you are scheduled. And uh, note that Professor Dave and I both will be in the uh, session listening to your pitch, so you better adhere to the guidelines uh, which are provided by uh, Professor Bingi Dave. Thank you, Professor Dev. Uh, lovely to have you from I am Bangalore today. Professor Dev also sits on the board of Catalyst and has been uh, engaging with startups over the last many years. Uh, thank you very much. Over to you, Professor Dev. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I hope you have your sleeves rolled up for HST 2020. Uh, as Puran said, uh, uh, I am very much associated with uh, IIT Mandi these last uh, four or five years now, and I'm delighted to be here to take you through this uh, bootcamp masterclass. It's called uh, the session is titled "Communicating for Startup Success," and I do believe that uh, what we're going to discuss uh, today will be useful to you, not just uh, in the next couple of days, but I hope it will serve you as a good guide uh, for all the uh, efforts and endeavors that you put in over the coming years in building your startup and i wish you all the best uh, let's get started we are a little bit uh, behind uh, schedule today uh, but we will probably try and finish by about 12 30 or 12 45 which should give you enough time for the other activities in the post-lunch session
So, uh, master class uh, I, is a pretty packed session, and uh, so it needs all your attention and uh, concentration. And uh, as Professor Puran mentioned, uh, we're going to focus on pitching, on being persuasive, on looking, uh, relooking at your deck what you have uh, for your pitch presentations coming up over the next three days. And uh, what I have found is, and based on feedback that I've got, is that some teams actually go back and change their pitch presentations and try and make it more in line with what we're going to discuss this morning. And uh, a few of them actually were very successful in, in, in being more effective in, in, in their presentations uh, to the uh, juries over here. So I hope you will uh, actually uh, benefit from this and uh, keep working in real time to make your pitch presentations even more effective. I've looked at almost all of the uh, pitch presentations that you submitted to uh, Catalyst uh, a while ago. And in fact, uh, during the course of this presentation, I will highlight a few of them. Not because they're good or bad, but I believe that we can use some of the visuals that you have created to actually uh, point out uh, things that you could do and uh, make your presentation more effective. Since there are a very large number of you, it becomes difficult if you all have your mics on. So I would ask that you keep your mics off until you're asked to or permitted to do so. Uh, there are two chats on this WebEx uh, seminar today. One is the regular chat and the other is the Q&A chat. You're free to ask questions at any time. Uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Tanya Roy, will, and I will both be scanning the Q&A box too. So if you have a specific question, put it in the Q&A box. If you have general comments, certainly use the chat, okay? So, uh, however, sometimes I've seen this happening in many, many online sessions that I've actually participated in, is, is that sometimes messaging gets a little uh, mixed up. So, However, having said that, look at the icon on the right of your screens. This is a two-way process. The learning will come by asking questions. Feel free to post, it doesn't matter. Uh, go with your emotions at this point and I'm sure we'll have a great uh, session. Not much else. Uh, there could be some issues because of the medium and the need to actually, when I show you video, I have to get out of this, and I may have some issues with finding the right way, so bear with me, and uh, we'll try and make this session as uh, interactive as possible. Uh, there are a couple of exercises that we've actually built into this session, so those will also serve as breaks. It will give me a break, and while you're working, it will give you a break, so uh, it's, it's tough. It's really hard listening to this guy for two and a half hours or whatever, but I hope uh, you will all be there. Can I, can I get some responses on the chat, please? Just to know that you're awake, breathing, and listening. Are we all good so far? Okay. Thanks, uh, Dr. Girish. Yep. It's nice to have you all awake there, and it's really motivating for me when I see you responding. Awake, great. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Thank you. Let's move ahead, okay? We're going to start with a quiz. You need to take a judgmental call on whether you think the statement on this on your screens now is true or false. If my product is innovative enough, people will beat a path to my doorway to buy it. What do you think? Is this true or false? Let's see it on the chat, please. Okay, wow. General says it's true. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I see a false there. Okay, Nitin says partially true. All right. 
Mr. Borrigan, lovely to have you today. Says it's false. I, I buy that. Achitra has been on, in this business for five years now. And I think better than who better than he to tell us what uh, this, whether this is true or not. Okay, uh, for all of those of you who said true, I hate to disappoint you. But the fact of the matter is, you may go out there and develop the world's best mousetrap. Okay, or whatever your product, idea, service, whatever it is. But the fact of the matter is that it's not necessarily true that if you have the best product in the world, people are going to beat apart to your doorway. This doesn't happen actually because uh, unless you're going out there and communicating, how will people get to know about and appreciate, understand, and be persuaded to actually put their trust in you and go with your offering. This is very, very key. This is a, a common fallacy that startups have, is that if I develop the best product and service in the world, end of story. In my opinion, end of story is the only right thing over here. You develop the best product and it stays right there, in your head, in your company, not out there in the market, not making waves, and not getting you the kind of leads and traction that you're looking for. So the reason why this is very, very important is uh, something that I'm going to explain to you in the next couple of slides. But before that, I'd like to ask you a question. You have CEOs, you have CEOs, you have co-founders. Do you have a CPO? Can somebody try and tell me what they think CPO stands for? Chief Product Officer, Chief Product Officer. Wow. Anybody else wants to take a guess? Both of these are wrong, at least from my perspective. Anybody there? Ah, oh, Gautam, I, I will buy you a chocolate whenever I get to meet you. Okay, Achitra is getting warm now, Chief Publicity Officer. But I think what I had in mind here was Chief Pitching Officer. Chief Procurement says Lokesh. Well, that's, that's interesting. Customer Pub Offer. Oh, wow, that, that, that sounds, uh, that's making me thirsty already. But <laughs> thanks, the, the, the part that what I had in mind was chief pitch officer. Uh, I, I'm just trying to reiterate the fact that pitching is the most important thing that you can be doing now. And I'd like to actually uh, bring your attention to something that was stated by a gentleman called Guy Kawasaki. Guy Kawasaki, for all of you uh, in the startup business, I suggest you get a picture of Guy and put it up on top of your desk, so wherever you look at, Guy is my guru. Okay? <laughs> Thanks, Lokesh. Okay, Guy Kawasaki made this statement. He says, I pitch, therefore I am. Obviously, it's a takeoff from Another very famous saying, which says, I think, therefore I am. But uh, I, I really love this piece that uh, Guy puts forward, which says, if there's anything that you should be doing now, and if there's the only thing that you should be doing now, it is pitching. Would you agree with me? Can I see some responses, please? Pitch, 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 pitch. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, really interesting because if you if if you see, in, in my opinion, I've seen this happening. Having worked with three corporate startups at this point, that the reason we don't actually do well, and in the new age of of of, of startups, I think it's a far more scientific kind of activity. It's a more uh, structured, systematic approach to actually getting to that success point that you're looking for. And, and some of the issues that really come up are 
is that people are unable to articulate their value proposition, tell people about why they should actually be actively considering that, right? This is this is very, 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 very important. I can't, and so we're gonna talk about this in a while from now, but I have seen pitches and you have seven minutes in your pitch to, to get your idea across to the jury or the investor or the customer or whoever you're talking to. And time is very short. And unless you're able to tell, I've seen pitches where at the end of 20 minutes, somebody in the audience says, you know, I still don't know what the hell you're talking about. What is your product? What am I going to get out of it? Why should I listen to you? These are very, very, very important considerations. And, and you need to convince people that what you're offering them is aspirin. It takes away their headaches. It's not vitamins, which are nice to have. And, and, and so I would ask you to all go back and we're going to do some work on this uh, in a while from now, is to work on value proposition. Number two, business plan versus business model and not so well articulated business model. What, what people are looking for, especially in, in, in the incubator investor uh, ecosystem, is does this business model make sense? Do these people have the go-to-market strategy? Do they understand the customers that they're talking to? Are they actually addressing the issues that users and customers out there have? That's very, very important. So focus on business model. Business plans, anybody can put, it's Excel sheets. Business plans come much later in this whole uh, evolution of your startup when you actually get down to uh, specific issues and profit and loss and investments and so on and so forth so are we all okay with this concept business model versus business plan can i have some reaction please okay great Dr. Girish has got it. I hope all of you have got it. Point number three. Why are we all here? We're here for pre-incubation. We're here for incubation. We're here for uh, testing our uh, uh, <clears throat> minimum uh, viable product or our MVP. Don't get into the Taj Mahal syndrome. The Taj Mahal took thousands of people, 11 years to build, and you, you are not in that position at the moment. You are not Shah Jahan, okay? So what we are really looking at is in getting your idea across, talk about the mud hut rather than the Taj Mahal, all right? So focus on the basics, and I'll show you an example of how Dropbox actually got its idea across in an MVP kind of uh, scenario. And that was it. That was the only pitch they made, okay? So this whole piece, and, and the reason why I believe that startups actually struggle is because they're too focused on building Taj Mahal. They're not clear about their uh, value proposition. They have faulty business models, or they're not able to put it across. And therefore, great ideas, without good communication to match and back up uh, your great idea, suboptimal, okay? So this is something that I would ask you to all look at. That's why we're doing this session and that's what your life is going to be. Okay, so here's the 50 lakh question. That's the funding you're looking for uh, down the road. The question you have to ask yourself is what is your product is your product the product no at this point in time and in my humble opinion your product is not your product building and communicating your business model is the product how many of you have heard of gentleman called ash maria I, I, ashok maria anybody heard so that's two names guy kawasaki Ash Maria, right? 
Anybody heard of Ash? Ash is the guy who took uh, the business model, uh, the business uh, model canvas that you have here, Lean Plan. We are great, lovely. Glad to hear that guy three, and 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 worked on lean approaches to startup business model building. You another guru of uh, that I suggest you pray to every day is Ash Maria. And I really like this statement that he makes. Work on refining your business model and communicating it rather than trying to build the Taj Mahal at this point in time. You'll get there, no issue at all. But uh, try and work on this. Are we all good so far? I need your buy-in on this one, okay? This, this is key to opening up your mind to the entire process of being and effective, effectual uh, startup. I will talk about the term effectual in a, in a while from now. But uh, I would uh, exhort all of you to actually work on this one. Great. Lovely. Thanks, Raki. I appreciate your comment. So the question is, all this sounds great. Lovely fairy tales, you know, uh, again about how to communicate. The question that people ask me is, so what can we do to, to work on, um, on, on improving our communication and making it more effective? And to do this, I use and uh, recommend to you a model that's called the AIM model. And you can see it on your screens now. It's a very simple model. It has, as the acronym and the name suggest, three components. Audience, number one, audience. Number two, intent or purpose. Intent or purpose. This is very, very important. We will come back to this in a couple of uh, seconds from now. And therefore, a model of uh, the model has a third component, which is the message. Now, audience, intent and message or audience, objective and message as it's sometimes used in the ARM model uh, are iterative and interactive, which means each of the three components impact the other. And if you change one of them, then you have to go back and, and relook the other components in the model. Are we all good so far? A model, three components, audience, intent, message. Are we good? Lovely. Thanks, Payal. Appreciate it. So let's get into some detail and use this framework as the basis for our discussion as we move forward. I sometimes ask uh, startup founders and team members, tell me about your audience. And they say, customers, people who buy the product, it's, it's absolutely an issue because can, can, can some of you just try and think about who is this person who's going to use or uh, buy your product? They're not able to tell me. If you tell me students, it's useless. Who are students? Seventh standard kids, college graduates, executive, uh, who are executives who are studying. It's not enough. The spectrum, the, the more precisely you can define your audience, the more effective you are going to be in communicating to them and to getting through to them and getting them to actually uh, take the leap of uh, uh, listening to you and trying out your product. So let me ask you a question. You're going to all be pitching to a jury today. That's your audience. What do you know about the jury this afternoon? Anybody have some ideas there? How many people? Who are they? Yes, Ali Rudha, can you tell me? I know the going's great, but now we're getting into some specifics. Do you know whom we're talking to? How many people? What are their backgrounds? Are they professors? Are they... Uh, uh, entrepreneurs, ah, right, you haven't been told. So, Ambika, this is the issue. Nobody is going to tell you who your audience is. 
you have to figure this out. Does that make sense? Right. Entrepreneurs, right? Hansa, Farad, that's nice. Who else? Okay. So what do these people do from the moment they get up? What do they do in their dreams? What are their aspirations? <laughs> Monsi, I love that. You, that's, that's, you have to ask the questions, right? So you're going to get a mix of our board, members of our board of governors, boards of directors, people from IIT Bundy, people from out there in the field, Mr. Saurabh Mittal, Chief Advisor of, uh, IIT, uh, of IIT Bundy uh, Catalyst. This is important, right? So you, wow. Farad, I love that fact. Check them out. Stop them on Facebook. Find out what they eat for breakfast. What makes them tick? What are the hot buttons that you can press to get them to light up like Christmas trees and listen to you? Investors, lovely. This spend time talking and in, in real life, go out. And if you say purchase managers, what kind of purchase managers? What qualifications do they have? What experience do they have? What are their needs and wants? What are their concerns? What are their issues? Nothing ever got done. You, you can't talk to some anonymous uh, audience. You know, it, it, the whole focus of uh, communication is to be a sniper. You have to know and pick out your audiences and shoot them. Okay? Right. That's, that's a great idea, Gavitri, uh, Gayatri. You need to know these people, right? And, and, and it helps. It, it really helps. If you don't have enough information, make some reasonable assumptions, but always talk to an audience that is definite, which is more, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. As you keep pitching, you will learn more and more about audiences and their specific needs and wants and start to become better at it. So think about your audience, right? Stop them, study them, research them, ask them. I hope I've given you some ideas over there, right? Very, very important to do this, all right? It's, it's important because the more you know about them, the more likely you are going to connect with them more effectively. There are internal audiences, there are external audiences, right? I want you to understand this. These people all work very, very differently. People from funding and evaluatory audiences behave very differently from customers and clients or suppliers and partners. All of you need to understand how media works, okay? You, one of the things that you can do today, especially social media, understanding people out there, how many of you have a Facebook page, a website? Can I get some responses? Yep, both. How often do you go there? Do you, do you actually interact with people there? How much time do you spend in, in getting to know them? Right, a LinkedIn page, very good. Okay, Pratik does it weekly, that's great. That's very nice. The more time you invest, all right, okay, website, Twitter, LinkedIn, each of these have different audiences, the media is different, the way you get across to them is different. Okay, but having said that, let's come back to our main focus for today, pitching and pitching to the jury in the next couple of days, all right? So keep in mind that audiences are very, very important. When you look at the second element in the AIM model, intent or objective or purpose, there are two parts. Their purpose, intent or objective and your purpose, intent or objective. Now this is not trivial. And, and why I say this is not trivial is that most pictures look at themselves and, and they speak from their perspective. They're not, they're I focused. They're not you focused. Remember that the better you know your audience, the more likely you are to understand what makes them tick. And put that first. If you address their issues and their concerns, 
and their objectives. You know, for example, when you face the jury in the next couple of days, what are they seeking to do? Understand your business idea? Okay, to some extent. But have you figured out that they have a purpose? They need to select people, they need to run incubation programs, they have to evaluate the probability of your succeeding because your success is their success, right? It's very, very important. On the screen, you will see under theirs an acronym, W-I-I-F-T. What is W-I-I-F-T? Yes, very good location. You're thinking on your feet. What's W-I-I-F-T location? What's in it for them? Right. That's that's very great pile, but how many times do we actually pitch based on what's in it for them? Okay? Everybody's talking about, I am this, this is my product, this is what I do, this is why, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to, to become the next Bill Gates and so on and so forth. Actually, the audience doesn't care. They're asking, if I listen to this person, what will I learn? If I agree to test their product, what will I get? How will it help me? They're really first primarily interested in their well-being and their benefit. What do they get in it, right? Okay, lovely. Thanks so much, Lokesh. Appreciate your comment there. So remember, put the audience perspective, purpose first. Yours is next. If you satisfy them, your purpose, that of getting the order or getting the funding or getting the incubation or, or finding a partner in life or whatever, always have a you perspective rather than a life perspective. So now we've covered audience and we've covered perspective. Are we good so far? Am I making sense or do you think this is some some not doable, airy fairy kind of stuff. Okay. Always put the audience first. Thank you very much for your uh, comments. Really, really good to to be there. Okay. So that was intent and purpose. There's another angle to this one. Okay. What are you seeking to do? Are you seeking to inform, differentiate? or pursue A? Are you seeking to inform, differentiate, or pursue A? All these are valid. Actually, in a pitch, you will do all these things. Which one, in, in your opinion, should be the primary purpose? Persuade. I hear persuade. I hear persuade. Thanks, General. That's great. And 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 general comes from a command and control and he's saying persuade that's lovely okay even today in the army or in the armed forces certainly you have command and control but persuasion is what motivates people right so we're going to talk about persuasion are we all good so far we're going to talk about okay so let me ask you now pop quiz number two if you had to rate your persuasive skills on a scale of one to ten Okay, persuade. Thanks, Raki. On a scale of one, how good or how persuasive do you think you or your colleagues or your company is? Let's hear, let's see some numbers. On a scale of 10, oh, wow, seven, nine, Aminotech. Okay, lovely. Raki, seven, ooh. I, I suggest you all divide that by about two and let's get into a little bit of discussion on what persuasion is. Okay, <laughs> thanks Pratik. Who are we persuading, Karandi Pass? That's, that's very interesting, your audience, right? Who is your audience? You need to get this down pat. All right, lovely. Amir says nine, you guys are, Tone it down a bit, folks. Tone it down. If you had such high skills, you're already in business, okay? But I don't mean to sound negative, but dumbing it down will help you. 
the second, before we get into the topic of persuasion, let me tell you that persuasion is based on your communication skills. Nothing else. Your ideas are there. The product features are there. Everything's in your head. Persuasion is about bringing these out and therefore actually getting it across, communicating to your customers and getting them to actually start working on it. Okay, so here's the definition of persuasion. And to read it, all right? Take a moment to read it. It's a long passage, so read it very carefully. And read it, put down on the chat the key words that you think are embedded in this sentence. What's the key words? What are what are the important words, right? Right. Changing attitude, lovely. Okay. Is it only attitude? We have to be this. I want all of those who wrote feelings. Yes, very good, Pratik. Feelings. Yes. Changing behavior and attitude. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely good. You guys are on the ball here. So, the purpose of persuasion is to change, ultimately, to change behavior. And, and as we're going to see in the next slide, there are two parts to this persuasive process. But ultimately, you want your audience, your customer, your prospect, your jury, your investor to do something. Be positively oriented towards you, to give you the incubation, to buy your product, to give you the money, etc., 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 right? Thanks, uh, Amir. Information, we will get into a little detail on that, but here are the key words. It's about changing first attitude and then behavior. And you do this purely through your communication skills. No product, as we saw earlier, you have the world's best mousetrap, it won't sell itself. You will sell the idea, the concept, and the product. So be very, very focused on this. All right? Are we good so far as we move forward? Yeah? Anybody there? Lovely. Great. So, having said that, we talked about attitude and behavior. I'm going to bring up two topics that are uh, two words that are related to that. Convince and persuade. Thanks, Neelam. Nice to have you on the chat. Convince versus persuade. Is there a difference? Attitude versus behavior. Convince versus persuade. Are you making a connection there? Is there a difference? Is there a difference? Achitra, I'm sure you can tell me there is a difference there, absolutely. It's uh, very interesting and uh, I picked up uh, the content on this slide from a book by Shubrata Bhakti. Do you all know who Shubrata is? Anybody? Okay, right. Who's Shubrata? Payal? Yes, absolutely. Shubrata and I used to work together in Wipro many years together. And uh, a couple of years ago, he wrote this book called Sell. Right. Yes, Vikash. Very good. So, thanks, Mansi. So, Shubhra wrote this book called Sell, and I think all of you should, you know, make the investment and read it. And uh, in this book, he is talking to his daughter, and his daughter is learning Latin. And Shubhra says, hey, why are you learning Latin? It's a dead language. Who uses Latin anymore? And she turned around and said, Papa, do you know the difference between the fact that both convince and persuade are terms from Latin? 
And if you look at the meaning of these two terms, the process of conviction of a person is a forceful process. It's a tell process. It's a, you listen to me and I will beat you with argument and I will pound you into submission. Right. Thanks, uh, uh, whoever at Amino. Subtlety. So persuasion is about advocacy. Have you heard the term advocacy? You are not an advocate for yourself. You do not speak for yourself. But you speak on behalf of your audience, your client, your prospect, your jury, your investor. And you take a position which is one of saying, hey, I have expertise, I have knowledge that is good for you. And I'm happy to consult. You don't tell people. You gently persuade them. You subtly move them to action. And therefore, there's a big difference between convincing somebody. I may be convinced, but I may not be persuaded. Are we all good? I may be convinced, but I may not be persuaded. Can, can, you give, can you give me a reaction to that one, please, somebody? Okay, Pratik. So, you know, I may agree with you, but I may not go out and buy your product. That's the big piece. By information, logic, argument up to a point, may convince a person. But there has to be something that takes that person who needs to actually go out. I understand that alcohol is a very bad for people, right? But to get you to stop drinking, for those of you who drink, don't drink, my apologies. But fact of the matter is, I know that it's bad. I am convinced that it's the worst thing that can happen to anybody, right? But unless I actually stop drinking, I start going out and doing things and that, that will get me there. I go into rehab, I go to Alcoholics Anonymous. I haven't actually started the process of change, okay? And therefore, understand that by providing information, you may convince somebody, but that's not enough. That's not enough. And if you take this slide on your screen, you will see that there are some not Latin words. These are now Greek words. There are three words here. Ethos, Logos, and Pathos. These are words from Greek. And I'm going to use these three words in our next slide to actually uh, take forward a process by which you will understand the components of a persuasive pitch and try and benchmark your pitches against these three components so that you can tweak them appropriately to make your pitch more effective. Are we good? Before we move forward, You who great, somebody's awake. That's very nice. Lovely. Okay, so let's look at this. The person uh, in the statue, or the statue is of a person by the name of Aristotle. Aristotle lived 300 years, uh, 2,300 years ago. And at that time in ancient Greece, uh, Aristotle was a citizen of the city-state of Greece, of Athens in Greece. And at that time, people conducted business and governance and administration through a process of delivering speeches, of pitching, of talking to people, of persuading them through the power of their communication. And, and while doing so, Aristotle wrote at that time, and by the way, that framework, it's called, he called it rhetoric. Rhetoric is still valid today. And people are in fact modifying Aristotelian rhetoric, the principles of Aristotelian rhetoric, even today in helping people to build 
persuasive content. Now, having said that, let's look at, there are three major or primary components and there's one secondary component. The three primary components are ethos, logos, and pathos. And the secondary one is kairos, or that of time. That's almost self-evident, which says the right message at the wrong time does not work. Okay? And, and all of you need to develop a sense of timing and, and being able to get in at the right moment and deliver ethos, logos, and pathos in a manner which is most acceptable. If your target audience is not open or receptive, the timing may be off, or you haven't got through to them, and you need to do something to get them to open up and start listening. Listening is the first process. Being convinced is the second. Being persuaded is the third. And if you look at Aristotelian uh, rhetoric, all these three work. So let's look at each one of them. Ethos is about credibility. And there are two parts to credibility. The credibility of the speaker or the company and the credibility of the purpose, which means is what you are doing something beneficial to them? Is it good? Is it believable? Can when you when you make a proposition to anybody, okay, what do you think is the first reaction of your audience? I make a pitch and say, you know, I'm in the business of sanitary pads or I'm in the business of, uh, you know, chocolates. And what's the reaction? Hey, this guy is trying to pitch me something. This girl has, has some hidden agenda. Who is this person? What are her qualifications? Why should I even start to listen to this person? That's right. Who is she? He, absolutely. You have to let this person into your consciousness. Otherwise, they may be hearing you, but they're not listening to you. There's a big difference between hearing and listening. Listening involves active, cerebral, cognitive, processing, whereas listening is uh, hearing is a physical activity. And so typically, typically, while there's no particular sequence of ethos, logos, and pathos, typically the first thing that you have to know is to get that person to, to trust you, to be comfortable with you, to let you into their consciousness, and then you can start to work on other aspects of persuading them. So, ethos, logos, and pathos. Let's look at a little bit about all these, okay? There is no two ways about it. In the Mahabharata, even Krishna had to establish his ethos. Now, all of you would say, what the hell, why does Krishna need to do it? But the fact of the matter is that Arjuna asked Krishna. He says, Krishna, you're giving me all this great gyan about how I should do battle with my cousins and my families and my gurus. You want me to, uh, you know, the dharma and karma and all this good stuff. Why should I believe you? And Krishna then has to reveal himself as the picture shows, as the ultimate, as the universe, as Vishnu himself. And then Arjuna says, Are bhai, maan gaya, maan gaya. Aap to guru hai. Right? So you have to create uh, atmosphere. Let me tell you a story. Uh, many years ago, when I was executive director of the Indus Entrepreneurs, or Thai Bangla chapter, I had these three people from uh, a software company that I will not name. They came to me and said, they, they had this pitch for building a dosa maker. You know, I thought you, you put in ingredients on one side and you get hot doses on the other. And I said, hey guys, why, why do you believe you're the right people to do this? What qualifies you? And what, why should I believe in you? And they said, you know, we have 75 years of software programming experience amongst the three of us. And I said, how did that help them build Dose Makers? 
okay, now we have artificial intelligence and machine learning, which may have some, even some vague connection to uh, dosa making, but the fact of the matter is that, so tomorrow, uh, today and tomorrow, you're going to pitch. The first thing you need to convince people is that your team is qualified, that they understand what, why they're doing it and how they're doing it. Bill, credibility, and ethos. Are we all okay so far? Do you buy it, Payal? Are you convinced or persuaded? I need you to be persuaded. Okay, great. So once you've let people into, or people have let you into their consciousness, you then proceed with your tell. You get into logos. Logos comes from the word logic. So you present information and data. Okay? Information and data are not an ending to themselves. Okay? If I were to tell you that my new product has 348 gig gigabytes of RAM, that's information, that's data. The question is, so what's in it for me? Why is 348 gigabyte advantageous to 276 gigabyte? Many people, when they say, tell me about your product, they pull out their mobile phone and show me, sir, see this app. Apps don't convince anybody, okay? They confuse them. It's much more than that, okay? You have to tell your story, you have to present facts in a manner that makes sense to the audience. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute from now. You have to take features and functions and translate them into benefits. Features and functions are fine, but by merely talking about features and functions, you may convince, but you do not persuade. People are persuaded by the goodness, the outcomes, and the benefits of what you are proposing. So, the way you put it across, the stories you tell, how interesting you make it, are all important factors which go with the Logos component of your uh, uh, page. So, take a look at this one, right? So here's the pic a picture of uh, a, a pair of cutting pliers, probably cut cables and stuff like that. And for each feature, you will see an explanation of the benefit that it offers, right? Ergo comfortable handle at the bottom of the screen, fits comfortably, makes it easy for you to cut. Okay, hardened and plated, Precision alloy steel, what does it do? Makes cutting easy, okay? Makes it light, not heavy, all these things. So I want you to go back and look at your slide and ask yourself, how am I translating in the process of developing Logos, how am I translating features and functions into benefits by showing me the functions of your app on your mobile phone, means nothing to me. I don't, I don't care. Anybody can do that. Okay? No big deal. But if I really need to understand what it means to me, how it will change my life, then, I'm, then you're getting there, right? Think about it. Is it vitamins or is it aspirin? What is the value proposition in terms of benefits? Uh, uniqueness alone, Pratik, may not be that. You may be the only guy who who's got a lousy product or, you know, how does it help? Think about it. Uniqueness, not necessarily so. Uniqueness is not a benefit. Are we, are we good with that, Prati? Okay, thank you. Sorry to pick you out, but I thought that was a good learning in that one, right? So, benefits versus features. Component number three is pathos. I have to like you. I have to trust you. You should make me feel comfortable. You need to give me that little nudge which moves me from being convinced. Once I'm convinced, I need to that nudge to say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is the hardest part of a persuasive pitch. 
is moving a person from being reasonably convinced to actually moving to take action. Okay, that's number one. Number two, other things being equal, all decisions are irrational. Why do I, oh, why, do I, why did I buy this phone, okay? I love Apple. Steve Jobs is my role model. The pink at the back, my wife loved it. I'm not sure whether I loved it, but my wife loved it. I want to make her happy. Am I getting through to you guys? Petas is about connecting. Now, it's not like Hindi movies where we have 20 minutes and bucketfuls of, of histrionics and, and tears and beta, beta. Not, I'm not talking. We, we are operating in a professional environment. The petas, <laughs> that petas, thanks, Pai. Petas is, is subtle. It's nudge. I, somebody, I think uh, Pratik or somebody said subtle earlier. It, it, you have to ask. You have to say, please. I hope I've convinced you. Are you willing to take the next step? How many of you are married or in a, in a relationship? Can I get some, some responses? Okay. Okay, Lokesh, you have to use pathos, all right? Okay, lovely Raki. Thanks so much for sharing everybody. Vikram, very good. You can keep dating a person forever. There's a lot of logos happening over there, but you have to ask at some time. Otherwise, it's going to cost you a lot in dinners and flowers and chocolates and movies, right? That's what happens in the selling process. People are continuously doing flowers and chocolates and, and yeah, at some point you have to you have to you have you have to go back and say, I, I've even had salespeople who have gone to customers and said, Sir, you need to give me the order, otherwise I will lose my job. <laughs> that's a little that's a little extreme, but there is an emotional connect. Storytelling is a great way in, in professional situations. Build, make it interesting and get this person to say, hey, there's something different. I've listened to 14 present. Your jury is going to listen to an average of 20 presentations in every session across three days. They're going to be brain dead. They need a little pathos. They need a little interest. They need to get something that says, oh, wow, I like this team. You know, are we, are we all getting there? Ethos, Logos, and Pethos. Now, they come in different quantities, in different sequences, but some, some, some proportion of Ethos, Logos, and Pethos has to be incorporated into your page. Because ultimately, the presentation is not the page. Who is the page? You are the pitch. Are we getting it? And you are a living, breathing bundle of paper. Absolutely. So uh, go back and look at your slides and ask yourself, am I, am I establishing credibility? And then presenting the benefits of the features and functions of my product in a manner which convince people to actually go further down the process of making a decision in your favor. And finally, are you getting them to become emotionally attached? Do they want to have more information, a demo? The process of making a sale is, is a step-by-step -step process and you move your audience through it one by one by one. Are we all good so far? Right. <clears throat> Lovely. So, any questions at this point? <laughs> no, you, Gayatri, you don't have to be like hungry puppies. 
but it helps to be warm and cuddly, you know. The people should be sure that they won't get bitten by you. Okay, great. <laughs> Big eyed helps. Big eyed definitely helps. Absolutely. Okay, you don't need tears, but come across nicely. You know, I, I can trust this person. I, I'm sure they're going to do a great job. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, looking forward to working with them. These are the kinds of emotions that people have. Fear is a big factor in your audience mind, which says, am I making the right decision? Will it work out for me? Will I get return on investment? Is it something that uh, my uh, peers and my bosses and my company and my shareholders will like? Am I making the right decision? They need assurance. One way of expressing pathos is assurance. Okay, you have to give that that nice feeling that says I can, I'm safe with these people. Are we all good so far? Okay, great, Ambika. Thanks, General. Lovely, Prati. Okay, so having talked about. The aim model, having talked about the elements of persuasive rhetoric and, and some ways in which you can actually get your pitch across, uh, I'm going to now move this discussion to an item that we talked about as, as to why startup struggle is their inability to articulate, to define and articulate their value proposition. So in order to do that, we have to understand what the value proposition, what is a value proposition and how do you go about building one? And from that, in the next step, how do we actually build a statement of our core or our core message of the articulation of our value proposition? That's, that's what we're going to do. You need to establish this value proposition up front in your pitch. Then people know what's in it for them. And then they're listening to you. Okay? So let's move ahead. Uh, we are running. We do, I hope we're doing fine. It's taking much longer than I thought. But that's a problem that we have when we teach online is it takes a little longer. So let's keep going ahead. Are we all okay? Okay, good. Thank you, Henendra. Awake. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So, <clears throat> the issue in value is what's in it for them. Value is, is an intangible. It's something that the target audience, the receiver, your customer, your investor, builds for themselves. They have the value you do not, you, you can give them logos and uh, pathos and stuff, but the value says, so people buy Apple, they cost one and a half times or twice as much as everybody else. The new Apple headphones, 53,000 rupees. For God's sake, who pays 53,000 rupees for a 2,000 rupee set of headphones? they obviously see something in it, which is way beyond cost. Are we good? Value is an intangible. Value is created in the mind of the recipient. And it has nothing to do with cost. In fact, sometimes mentioning cost actually turns people off. Build the value first. My wife and I went to Jaipur some years ago and my wife wanted to buy saris. And so we went to this lovely sari shop. And, 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 and the moment you go in, it's first it's cool, it's air conditioned, they give you a takia to sit on, everything is nice. They will ask you where you're from, they will give you a cold drink, all this little chit chat, all the preamble happens. And then you're shown thousands and thousands of saris. And then my wife says, how much does this cost? 
And what does the salesman say at that point? Does he give the price? No, he says, Madam, Pasan kar lijega. Phir. Phir. That's it. First, it says, become convinced that this is what you want and we will make it happen. That's 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 a masterstroke. Do not push hard. And Madam, of course, bought six saris at the end of that, and the price didn't matter at all because she saw some value there. She said, this salesman is great. I like this person. Any price he gives me will be, you know, reasonable and acceptable and so on and so forth. So these are things that we actually do. Are we all good so far? Are we clear about what the value proposition does for us? Value has nothing to do with cost or price. It's about building the person to a level where they see something in it which goes way beyond that, okay? And, in, and the way we go about building value proposition statements is by looking at what we call a product solution fit. We will come to this in a few moments from now, the product solution fit, or the sometimes also called the product market fit, okay? So you build it by uh, using the value proposition canvas. Have any of you ever encountered this uh, this item, this this concept, this document? Okay, Ashok says he's done so. Wonderful, thanks, Ashok. That's great. Uh, have you ever used it uh, to advantage? Have you built one, Ashok? Okay, I guess he does. So let's spend the next few minutes looking at the value proposition canvas. And one way of doing this is to, I'm going to try and load a video at this point. I say try because there are some technology involved in this thing. So uh, let me try and get this value proposition uh, for you. If I can in some way, Get this done. Okay, I hope you can all hear me. I'm going to try and start this three minute. Uh, video, you should be, if you're not able to get the, the audio, please let me know right away. Okay, please listen to uh, this.
Okay, can you hear me now? Good, if some of you had trouble with actually connecting to uh, or seeing that properly, I've sent you the link to do the uh, video clip. Okay, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, look at, go please visit strategizer.com. It's, it's a brilliant resource for startups. It's it's uh, really I've seen this growth over the years, and that's fine, lovely. You can always go and look at it, and you can uh, download the video. And there's also a, if you register on the Strategizer site, you can also download a set of instructions. There's a document which very succinctly and very simply helps you to actually build your own value proposition canvas. So this is what it is in effect. Quickly uh, recap what we saw in the video. The value proposition uh, has two parts. One is the, uh, the, the customer part and the, the other is the value part or the offerings, the, pro the market need and the product. And there are three parts. When we look at the right hand side, what is it that the customer, client, user is trying to achieve? Jobs to be done. What are the current issues, problems? So you may be in a new category. That means that the customer may not be even be aware that they have to get some things done, but in most cases they do. In some cases, it's an established category that you need to look at. What are the shortcomings of the solutions that are available there? What are the problems that uh, users and customers uh, actually uh, encounter? And what gains or what benefits does the uh, user actually seek to gain uh, while trying to get the jobs done? That's one half of the uh, concept. On the other side is you. What are the products and services that you offer that will help the customer or client to get the jobs done? How does the product or service in its features and functions actually address and obviate or minimize the pains that the customer is experiencing while trying to get their jobs done? And how uh, does and how does your product, service, or idea actually help the customer to realize the benefits and create additional gains for the uh, customer? Are we all good so far? Have we understood this piece? All right, great. Now. When we have these two pieces and I've got the arrows coming in, your ability to succeed as a startup will depend on how well you actually, what is the fit between what the, is on the customer side and what is on the idea side. The extent to which the two of them fit or address 
or how well the pain relievers, to what extent they actually uh, alleviate the pain, or whether they help realize, to what extent they help realize the benefit, will determine how strong or how good your value proposition is. A couple of things. You have to make a value proposition for every customer segment. It is not a single one. Let me give you an example. If you are in the education space, you have audiences, you have the student himself or herself, you have the parents or the sponsors of that uh, student, you have college administration who are also involved, or school or college admin. So there are actually three segments that you address in this entire uh, value chain that you're trying to create. So the jobs to be done by the student and the pains that he or she experiences and the benefits that he or she is looking for is very different from what the parent or sponsor may be looking for. The parent or sponsor has a different purpose. And, and they have other concerns and issues and they want things, benefits, which they believe is useful to uh, their child or student or protege, and which is very different from what the school or college administration, right? Absolutely. Uh, Rakhi has put this down very well. So you have to build one Rakhi because you are, to, in order to make the sale or consummate or persuade and move this down the value chain, all you need to understand the value that every link in that value proposition chain actually uh, comes about. Are we good? You can't do it only with the end user. The student does. Okay, so there's this concept. There are different concepts. So the economic buyer makes the, the who makes the decision to buy the student or the parent or the school. They have different roles. Yes, but they each you have to convince the student to go and say, Papa, Papa, I want this. Papa should say, Oh, yeah, this is great. Let me go to college and ask them to do it. Now, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Or when you go to the college and say, Please introduce my course into your curriculum, they have, they, have, they have a commercial issue, they have a curricular issue, they have other kinds of things which are very different from what the student who's the end beneficiary, the, the parent who's the intermediary and the sponsor, and the actual distribution. Uh, agent in this entire supply chain, right? But what we do is we we don't look at them separately. We have to create a value proposition canvas for each one of them. Only then will your pitch actually be modified. So when you're talking to parents, the pitch is different from when you're talking to students. It's very different from when you're talking to school administrations. All right, am I making my point reasonably well here? And this is where we make a mistake. You go to a technical buyer in a car and say, you know, uh, IT chief, the IT chief is not the only person in the decision making process. There's the purchase manager, there's the, there are committees, there's the CEO, there's the CFO. In, in a B2B kind of situation, it gets fairly complicated and different stakeholders in that process of decision making have different needs and wants. And therefore you need a value proposition canvas for each one of them. The CFO is going to ask, will it improve my profit? Marketing is going to ask, is it going to improve my revenues? The IT guy says, you know, will this, will this, you know, help me get my next promotion? And so on and so forth. Everybody has different needs and wants. So a model works brilliantly to help you in this process of understanding stakeholder needs also. Are we good so far? Just to look at a very simple kind of situation was Dropbox. And, and this story has been told many times. Dropbox had nothing. They were just two or three people who were talking to uh, investors. And, and they were very clearly able to put down the problem, the segment, and the solution. And, and they were able to build uh, in the minds of their customers 
it, the story, and this is hearsay, but the story says that they were sitting in a coffee shop and they picked up one of the placeholders, the, the, the table mat, and actually drew a quick diagram which says customer, something like a value proposition a canvas, and, and, and put the pieces down and said, whoa, that's it. Okay. Here's the one for Evernote. Okay, Evernote is, as you know, a notepad application which you get on Android. And here's a very simple, now this is slightly modified value proposition. You're free to, to modify it the way you want, but I think the fundamental concept and principle is the same. Okay, so uh, jobs to be done, pays, wants, right? On the other side, what does the product do? How well does every one of them actually correspond to the uh, uh, piece on the other? This is a, a simple, easy to use kind of thing. Don't, please don't make this into one, you know, 50,000 post-its and, and 42 colors and, and 33 lines. Keep it simple, guys. The human mind can't cope with complexity beyond three or four line items at a time. And you think you're doing a great job by giving 42 different uh, pieces? It doesn't work, it works against you. Pick the top pieces, put down the, the major pains, look at the top two benefits and address just those. Sure, your product may do a lot of other things, but keep it simple. Bring it down to the bare minimum, okay? Don't talk about Taj Mahals. Talk about mud huts. Are we good? Do you, are, do you appreciate my mud hut Taj Mahal pitch at this point? Let's share it. Okay. Keep it simple. You don't have the time and energy to build the Taj Mahal. Time is going away. You've got to get your point through fast, quick, easy, simple, clear, out. All right. So build value proposition using this and and and. And so here are key questions that you have to ask. Who are the customers? We've talked about this. Are there actually multiple people, multiple customers in this value chain? What are each one's issues and pains? What outcomes do they want? How do they measure value? Not how do you measure value for them? What is it that they see as value? Why do I buy this product? My wife loves it, nothing else. Gigabytes, three cameras, iOS operating system, subhar they get. Wife just loved it, right? Get on with it, all right? So we talked about segments and in existing uh, uh, product uh, areas or domains, what are the unmet needs or what are the problems that people have? So ask these questions. Go out and get answers to this. This is not something that you do sitting in, in, in your office or on your desk at home and, and, and get this done. Go and test the value proposition by asking 10 customers. Is this correct? Do you agree? Are my assumptions correct? Have I put down the right pains? Which are the most important pains? What do you, what of these, which one do you think you will appreciate the most? Which has the greatest value for you? Let's not try and do this by yourselves. You're, you're going to just get into a blind spot kind of situation, right? And it's the job of the founder CEO to get this value proposition in place, right? The best entrepreneurs are effectual. The word is effectual. It comes from effective. They are able to make things happen. They are able to validate. They are able to go out and check uh, through a scientific structured process whether this product is going to work or not. If it doesn't, you pivot and change your model or you do other things. You're going to learn about this when you get into incubation, about pivoting and, and reworking. But the key to this whole thing is building a value proposition and going out and validating it. And validate it with a sufficiently large sample size. You can't ask your mother-in-law, brother-in-law, and sister-in-law and say, do you like it? 
That's not validation. Validation is finding the right customer audience, looking at different categories, people who are not emotionally connected to your value proposition, and then trying to see whether it actually will work or not. Great. Now, what I'm going to do actually is to we could take a little break here, but that's work for you. Uh, I'm not sure, Tanya, do you think you can get this? Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to put it on the share here. There's a link here. Uh, you can go and download a copy of a value proposition canvas template in word format. I, I'd like you to, as a team, connect off, off this conference, take 15 minutes, and do you think you can try and quickly put down a very rudimentary value proposition canvas relating to one customer segment in your business domain? Yes or no? Hello? Okay. If you are more than one member on this, uh, please uh, go for it, everybody. Your 15 minutes starts now. No, uh, sorry. You are not being paired with other teams. Just do it on your own because your value proposition, this is not a generic exercise in value proposition building. It's very specific to what you are doing, right? Does that help, Gayatri? And I'm Tanya, I'm going to take a short break. Sure, sure, Professor. 15 minutes uh, to the teams? Yes, please. OK, Thank sure, you. Professor. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Get a you all in 15 minutes. Uh, we'll see everyone else in 15 minutes. Right. <clears throat>
Okay. Can, can we have everybody back? Okay. Great. Thank you all for your efforts. I hope that exercise, I'm sure the time is very short, but uh, let's try and take a look at, uh, oh wow, that's good. Great Ambika. Try, try and put this down as best as you can. Okay, what I'm going to do is I've uh, received a a file from Rocky. Um, I'm going to try and uh, show that to you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, are you all there? Can I can I can I get some responses, please? We need to get back on track. We're already running fairly behind. Okay, and can you can you take a look at uh, what uh, Raki Gupta has sent us? Yes, her uh, value proposition uh, chart. Raki, can you tell us? which customer segment you are looking at here. Very important, it's uh, very, very well done. That's really lovely. Okay, thanks Rakhi. She says asthmatic patients, Indians, 30, to 50 years, male, female, is there a difference? Okay, great, Mansi has very clear. What does hospitality segment actually mean, uh, Mansi? Okay. Existing existing inhaler users is what you mean, Raki, or first time users. Okay, be very specific, Bansi. That helps a lot. Is it restaurants or is it breweries? Or or are they pubs? Breweries produce a uh, beverage. Restaurants serve it. Pubs, great, thank you. Urban pubs, rural pubs, are they different? Clubs, are they different from pubs? Just, just giving you urban locations, very good. I'm sure there would be a big difference if we looked at uh, rural locations in terms of what they may be looking for. Great, so here's an example of a very nicely done uh, value proposition canvas here. I would ask that all of you actually work on, on, on your own. Okay, that would be really great. Let's get back to the main presentation at this point. Okay, Ashok, thanks. I, I, will, I will try and look at it, but at this point, Let's move along. Uh, is that okay, Ashok? I will definitely take a look at your submission. I will try and read everything in the chat and uh, get back to you. So let's, uh, I think we've at this point to recap, we've done a lot of work on audience, intent, purpose, 
creating, and we've done the preliminaries to the messaging, which is basically that uh, of building a value proposition canvas. Let's move to the third aspect of uh, the A model, which is that of building the message, right? And as you may have observed from uh, what we've been discussing so far, your message requires flexibility. It changes depending on the audience, the situation that you're in, and the purpose. Different purposes may uh, actually exist, and so you need to have a great deal of uh, flexibility. So one way of doing this is to create a core set of content that is then adaptable, or you take out certain parts for different types of audiences. For instance, if you have a list of uh, product benefits, some benefits may be more applicable or relevant or appreciated by certain segments, so you only talk about those. Avoid laundry lists, be selective. Try and bring down the number of pitch points that you make to a bare minimum, which will actually help in uh, addressing the specific needs and wants of your target audience, okay? And one way of doing this, and this works very well, and I've had a lot of startups actually doing this, is to develop what is called, I call a core message. It's a statement of what you do and the value that you offer to your customer segment or segments. And it answers the question, what do you do? Why do you do it? For whom do you do it? And what's the benefit or what's in it for them? This is not a sales pitch. This is a very bland definition. It, it does not have too much persuasion in it. But what it does basically is to give your audience or your or, uh, customer or your investor a very quick idea and pitch. This is specifically, and, I, and you will see that I will actually ask you to use this core message in your pitch presentation upfront so that you very clearly establish with the audience exactly what you do, so that there's no lack of clarity about what you actually do. So let's move forward. Have, have any of you seen the business model canvas? This is the business model canvas. I'm sure many of you would have done it. What do you, uh, any comments? Have, have you seen this one? Okay, great. Some of you have seen it. Yes, certainly, Achitra, you would have used it fairly extensively. So when you craft a core message, you are basically focusing on these four boxes in the business model canvas. Here's an example of a what I consider reasonably good, a little long, but nevertheless, core message, which was drafted by a startup in a previous Himalayan startup trek. And HFI, I do believe, is uh, doing very well. And they have a very unique solution that addresses the Himalayan region and the specific problems that electricity distribution companies have, that consumers have, actually uh, getting billing and uh, uh, you know reading of meters done. Any comments? Oh, good, lovely. Very good, uh, Mansi and uh, Aniruddha. Keep working on it. These are your business model canvas is a living document. It keeps working, right? So anybody has any comments on the HFIL core message? Does it talk about what we do, why we do, for whom we do? and what benefits they get from it. Anybody? Yoo-hoo! Are we awake? OK. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Amir. Thanks, Anusha. OK. 
Yes, another Himalayan uh, example, right? You, you'll have to build it the way you think it's useful to you. These are just illustrative examples. They're not necessarily the best or perfect in any way. Okay, so here's another company that went through the uh, exploration program two years ago, and they had uh, uh, equipment that actually helped to clean, grade, and pack apples. Okay, it's it's a given that Ekikal is it's a company that uh, started up by apple growers. They're not. You know, people like you and I from, come from strong academic background, but I thought this was a nice example of a way of actually stating very clearly, not saying it's, it's a it's a matter of fact statement, and it, it talks about what we do, why we do it, not so much about why, but uh, it talks about for whom and what benefits that they're getting, right? So this is at least another type of core message. So <clears throat> uh, I'm going, I actually thought that uh, we could get another exercise done, but uh, if any of you have a core message already written, send it to, to us over the chat. Otherwise, if you like, you can mail it to me and I'll take a look at your core message and I'll try and give you some of my comments on it offline at the end of the session. I, I do believe we are very, very, very much behind schedule at the moment. Is that okay, folks? All right, great. I, I, my, my commitment to you is that I will certainly look at your core messages, take some time, work offline. But remember, it must be short. Okay, that's, that's really great. Uh, we build customized. Okay. Wow. There's some good ones here. All right. That's good, Vivek. Nice, nice to see your uh, uh, contribution here. Uh, and from uh, Babel. Right. Go back and critically look at whether it answers all the four questions or the four components of a code message. Wonderful. Uh, that's that's really good. You must ask yourself, is it fair enough? Yes. Solar-based food processing solution. Try and define small and marginal farmers if possible. Okay, that's that's very good, right. Ah, uh, Adil, I see your Gurukul core message, but I think it's not concrete enough. It's it's pretty generic. Anybody could write this. Are you differentiating your company and your offering from uh, by uh, by the statement? Who are the learners? High school kids. What kind of educators? What 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 does it help them do? This is uh, very much a what and uh, for whom, but it doesn't have the other two components in it. I think you could work on this, but it's a good effort. Thank you for that. Okay. Right, Rocky helps chronic asthmatic, what? Okay, chronic, are they? Okay, you're writing for a general audience, so chronic is fine. If you're writing for doctors or uh, medical professionals, you may need to uh, really uh, concretize Concrete, uh, chronic, the word chronic. Okay, okay. How will it help them? What will it do for them? This is very important. There needs to be a little bit of a benefit statement here. That will help a lot. That's really great. Okay, and uh, Prati, which says uh, Vector Interactive makes video games for people who like to play Indian origin PC games, very good, so it runs on a PC. Okay, so here you've got two pieces, uh, Pratik. One is the fact that you offer ready-made uh, games for uh, PC users. 
And then you have the second piece which says training people to make their own games, okay. Uh, it seems to me that uh, it's, it's okay, there's no issue there, but I'm, I'm, I see a little dilution in terms of the focus. Uh, which one is more important? Which one is the most important? Uh, look at the primary, what you do and for whom you do in your statement. This is very useful. And by the way, when you talk to juries, juries like to see single statements. If they, they, they are averse to seeing people who are doing too many things and trying to you know, be everything to everybody, the more focused you are and the more uh, clear and in terms of the specific target, your major primary target audience, where's the revenue going to come from, which is the basic business model will help a lot, okay? Uh, Ashok, uh, wow, that's, that's fairly complex and not easy to understand. What is SaaS coaching? Can, can, we, can we write this in English? Don't mind me, I'm just being, I'm being a little harsh over there, but I'm doing that for a purpose. So, with, uh, okay, try and avoid getting too much into the how of how you do it. The how is not important, even when you make uh, an elevator pitch, the how is not a good idea. The how then starts getting into technologies and so on and so forth, which the target audience is not really concerned with, okay? The how does not wow them. It wows you as, as the producer or it wows the techie, but it's not of real primary interest to the, uh, the target audience. So that's, that's something that, Coacher, coachy, it's all getting very complicated. Try, try and, and make it tighter, cleaner, easier. Is that okay, Ashok? Okay. And then Gayatri says, we teach ethnography. How many people will even understand the word ethnography, Gayatri? You have to be a postgraduate, right? What does it mean? What is ethnography? How does ethnography help young professionals work faster and build stronger insight? Insight into what? Okay, I appreciate that you may have just written this on the fly or give it some thought. Go back and ask the four questions. Ask whether it, the language it can be made easier and more understandable. Or in, they're going to say, hey, look, I need, a, I need a PhD to understand what this lady is saying. So uh, try and do that, okay? Ethnography, and then uh, Alimo Amino says vegan plant based nutrient supplement. Okay, again, there's a bit of a how there. Big words like biocomposition. Ooh, wow, right. What are lifestyle ailments? Can we can we be more concrete? That's something that we have. Thanks, though, for a good attempt. Anusha says, for caregivers and chronic disease, what are chronic diseases? How do I identify with that disease? Do I know a little more about it? Sounds, sounds a little uh, difficult to understand. What is, medic what is medication compliance and so on and so forth? Uh, Anusha, I think you can work on that a little more. Okay, Akash uh, says a generator of what stores? Department stores, food stores, stationery, garments, electronics, or all stores. I think we need much more clarity there. Good effort though. 
I'm sure you've been doing that on the fly. Okay, <laughs> Mansi is coming back. I like I like that one. Okay, right. Okay, that's 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 good. That's nice. Thank you. It's getting far more focused and easy to do. Okay, very nice. What are, uh, Saji, what are proprietary products? I have no clue. Agri waste, I can begin to understand, but what proprietary products are there? <clears throat> Engaging rural communities is a how? Who, who, who is your audience? I'm not clear about that. Who will buy these products? How will it benefit them? Okay, so please work on that, Saji. Okay, Aver. Okay, that's fairly clear. Okay, and then you've got some tagline there. Try try not use the tagline on your on your presentations and brochures and website. Okay, Vinoj, sustainable, scientific, one-stop solution. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, St. Jude's. <laughs> okay, Mansi. Okay, thanks, Sachitra. That's Achitra, aren't we talking e waste in your case? Can, can you be more specific? Is it any kind of waste? It tells me very clearly that companies are your segment, but I'm not sure. I, I have this impression that you worked in the uh, e-waste e business. Okay. Uh, that's, that's very good. Okay, I'm looking at Gotham, IoT products. The word help uh, is typically help, assist. These are not very concrete. How do you help them? Why do they need help? What kind of help? Can we be more specific, Gotham? Okay. Great, Anusha, give us another version. Dr. Kotekar. Can you, Girish, can you go, uh, you know, uh, we help manage people or we sustain or we Make healthy malnutrition people. We restore nutrition around the world. Okay, fine. That's good. Is it one product, Girish, or multiple? Is there some specific areas in which you operate? Try and be more uh, concrete there. Very good. Okay, great. I will I will go through these. Tanya, I request you to please uh, send me the chat. I will go through these and try and get back to you over the course of the next few days. In the meanwhile, I really appreciate all your efforts. I'm seeing a fair degree of clarity here, and I'm sure that with some work, it will become really easy. OK, let's move forward. Uh, we have to give you time before uh, the next afternoon session starts. So I have to move forward. Uh, and so I will do so. I want to spend a few minutes 
Now, looking at the message that you are all going to deliver to a very specific target audience, namely the juries uh, that you will be meeting over the next couple of days. And uh, I, I, I see this as a very important part of this session because I will give you my inputs and then suggest that you review them and see whether there is anything you can do to make your pitch deck more effective. I have picked a few visuals from the slides that uh, some of the teams have submitted to uh, Catalyst. As I said, this is not meant to show that they're good or bad. I think it helps to highlight some points that may be of use to all of you. Okay, so can I go ahead? All right, thank you. So, I start this section by making a very negative statement. Just think about this. We are going to watch. Uh, I, okay, the cat is out of the bag. I'm one of the jury members, but I'm going to be watching 70 pictures in the next three days. I already know that I'm going to suffer from death by PowerPoint. Hello? No reactions? Anybody there? Or are we already dead by PowerPoint? <laughs> okay, great. So, the point I'm making is make your presentations interesting. Do something that will catch the attention and differentiate your pitch from that of the others. Okay, there are uh, you know, lots of seats going, but nevertheless, your purpose here is to get selected. And the purpose of the jury is to evaluate whether your idea has merit, whether the team is in a position to deliver on what they are planning to do, and whether, you know, Catalyst will be able to add value. This is very important. When you look at these kinds of pictures, these are the these are the types of parameters that juries look at. Is the idea feasible? We're not looking at why we're is the we're not looking at viability. There are two things. Feasibility is is it workable? Viable is about financial viability or social viability or uh, environmental viability and so forth. But I think at this point. What they're trying to understand is this, is this a reasonably doable kind of uh, focus and objective that the idea has? That's number one. Number two, is this team in a position to actually deliver on the promise that they're putting forward? And three, can Catalyst help? We are not primarily, for instance, a funding agency, right? Be we may not be, but and and so the, that that promise is not necessarily there. So the question is, what value will Catalyst, IIT Monday, mentors, and other stakeholders on the Catalyst side actually be able? How will we be able to help you? Your ask slide is a very critical slide on this one. So make it different, understand the audience, and then tailor your presentation uh, the way it is. You have very, 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 very little time. Seven minutes, eight minutes, max 10 minutes, okay? Get to the point fast. Get your core message in up front. Let people know what you're doing. We don't need all the preambles. You know, by the time you get through the first 14 slides telling us about the market, your mission, mission vision, blah, 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 blah. I, we are out of time or I've lost interest. Typically, audiences of this type will come to some kind of a mental position on, on the pitch in the first minute or so, maybe two minutes max. Okay, like an elevator pitch. Think of the first part of your presentation as an elevator pitch. You've got to get this done fast. Okay? Avoid the motherhood statements. 
keep it simple yes keep it simple straightforward go for it are we all good can i have some reactions your job is to make it easy for the jury to select you and not somebody else you have to cut content you have to make it simple you don't have to tell the whole mahabharata just the highlights what you think will motivate and persuade the jury to actually take take up your case and move you to the next stage right all of you and i'm happy to see that some of you are already using the template that uh, the catalyst team has sent to you these are the uh the the slide deck components that they have sent you and i find that many of you are doing a great job in terms of actually getting this forward i'd like to suggest a couple of other things here's my suggestion be sure to have a great cover slide and then put your core message up front then talk about team this is very important build ethos build clarity build ethos talk about market segments that who you're going to address what your solution is and how it works and and that and unique value proposition can move forward backward then the why us or competition and differentiator slide where you are today what is your ask close are we all good it's not substantially different from what catalyst has but it's somewhat slightly modified any any comments you can this is by uh, rakhi i think getting the team in has to be team has to be done up front that's the credibility issue okay right thanks girish okay yes you don't but this is a problem this is a problem and you need to put that core message in a visual element you could even put it on your cover slide if you want to change the slide but state up front what you do why you do it for whom you do it and why it's going to change the world okay right very uh, simple thanks neelam let's go into a little detail on each one of them okay cover slide needs cover slides part of pathos is visual stimulus okay your your cover slides have to be evocative they have to grab the attention of the user they have to have a visual appeal it has to be it has to be spiritually uplifting and i have to say wow okay like the james bond movies right the first 10 minutes bishum 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 they get grab the audience and 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 keep them for the next 2 hours right Here's a cover which was made by a very relevant cover made by the team that pitched uh, at uh, HST some years ago. Okay, here's a, a, a lovely slide that uh, one of the teams actually put into their pitch deck. Start with your core message story. It 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 creates tremendous impact. Okay, and it it has drama. It has pathos. It has everything in it. I I I saw this and I said, tell a story, even if my punctuation is wrong, right? Uh, get get the attention. You got that two minutes to get there. Let's not start dull and boring and death by PowerPoint. Let's let's get some interest out there. Are we all good? The problem statement Siddharth uh, comes as uh, part of uh, come in my opinion. your your core message should in itself embed part of it it's subtly telling people that this is the problem and and therefore your solution for it it gets into you could get into a little more detail a little later on okay when you talk about your product or your the uniqueness of your product okay so that try it out it works okay moving forward uh my apologies to the himalayan chocolates i think you have a great product and i think you do some great work but i was unhappy with your cover slide 
Show Catalyst gave you a template. Can we, can we do something to make it more interesting? We're talking happiness. We're talking chocolate. We, we have great, we have, we have so much emotion and we, we can, just the thought of a nice picture of chocolate is going to get me there, okay? I'll come back to you in a minute later, but I think you lost an opportunity there. Okay, and then the core message, what you do, which embeds in itself, uh, what the problem is in, in, in not as many words. You could talk it over. You could talk it over. You could get the problem in uh, verbally if you need to do that. Okay, here's another nice uh, nice one. Is Simplified, somebody from Simplified there? Not only do they have a, a lovely, uh, uh, very short uh, core message there, they've got some great there. Okay, right, Vivek, thank you. I, I enjoyed your slide. They were really different, very visually appealing. And uh, I say this without prejudice. Okay, guys, you need to invest. Your product is your pitch, right? Think, remember that. <clears throat> Get your team in, keep it short. You don't need to have three pages of CV at you know, 14 point font, nobody can read it. Don't go into great detail, okay? When you show, show the minimum and talk about why this team is, is well positioned to actually deliver on the promise. Do not read the slide, okay? So here's uh, one from Binbag. Okay, they've actually taken a dual approach. They've got investors and they've got the team. Talk it over, okay? Talk briefly about it. Don't make it too heavy. If you make it too heavy, people will lose interest. Yes, uh, very neat, in my opinion, very neat kind of uh, team slide. Are we all okay so far? Anybody there? All right, that's good. So go back and look at your team slides. <clears throat> uh, the other thing is that I've saw, seen that a lot of the teams have very heavy detailed slides about market, charts, graphs, 14 different items on one viewing plane. Remember that your, your, and, and now not my screen, not my projected screen, but my computer screen can only accommodate that much. You make it too busy, people are going to lose track. And two, you as the speaker are going to get too caught up in all this detail. Try and keep it minimal and simple, right? This is, this is too much for anybody to take it. And you're going to talk about all these things, you have seven minutes, right? So, Please work on your slides to make them as simple as possible. Description of your product, service, or idea. Keep it short, focused. Pick a couple of features. Avoid getting into too much technicalities. Make it visual. Show your product. Show your product. That's 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 really nice. Okay, here's here's one uh, from Byway. Look at look at the look at the way it works. If they address the issues, very simple, low on word count, great colors, lovely visual appeal. Wow, that's that that caught my attention. All right, kept me focused on on what we do. Uh, well done, by way. Okay, here's a redeeming feature for TXC. I I like the the way they show their product, and they have a combo pack. I can remember it. I've seen 70 presentations, but I can remember what these guys showed me. Okay? Ah, absolutely. You're most welcome. Great. So, absolutely, there's some things we can do and some things that we can't do, right? Uh, here's where you can bring in the pain solution and the fit in one, because you don't have the luxury of slides on slides. So, uh, 
Uh, I will send you, Tanya will share these slides with you. Can we do that immediately after this presentation, please, Tanya? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so, sure. okay, so try and see whether you can do something about it. A uh, great way to get into this whole piece, just uh, the Tesla uh, value proposition canvas. It's a little too busy for my liking, but nevertheless, I think it works very well. And you can see uh, the uh, correlations between pain relievers and pain causers, gains. So nice way of doing this one. Compensation, uh, competition and differentiators keep it very simple. Try rather than describe what your competition does using a chart or a table makes it very easy for the audience to visually take in why the number of ticks that you have or the number of up arrows that you have. Very simple. This is again a slide from a previous deck, right? Very simple. Here's another one from the current deck. Uh, I like this one. Very, very easy to read. Comes off, tells me what I need to know. Okay. And it talks about what your competitive advantages are. It's not about describing the competition, but pitching why you are different. Are we all okay so far? Can I have a response, please? All right. So we are at competitive analysis. Great. Thank you. Okay. Our uh, current status and future plans. I would focus on the current status. And uh uh, almost fatal mistake that many startups uh, commit or get into is talking about future plans. We will break even in three years. We'd have, uh, you know, 40% market share by 2025. My suggestion is focus on where you are now because you're looking at an exploratory program. They need to understand how how far you've got down the process. Are you in market? Are you in revenue? Are you at idea stage? Let's not have these projections for the next 14 years. That's all Excel work. And by say making grand statements like I will break even in three years, nobody buys that stuff, okay? And that's not of importance to them. Their importance is, can I add value to this person? It is very, very clear. So keep your, uh, status, talk about what traction you're getting in the in the market rather than, or traction with various other stakeholders rather than projecting stuff, right? Make it simple. Here's a very good visual uh, thing, though they do talk about the next three years, but just as a matter of uh, some example, there are ways of actually showing this visibly and talking. Always talk over the slide. The audience can see the slide. You don't need to read the slide. You don't need to do too much expression. You need to direct the attention of the audience to that part of the visual that they're already seeing. So be visual and use less text uh, to the extent possible. Now, this is very key. And as I said, one of the parameters that all incubators use is, can I actually add value to these people? For instance, Catalyst is a technology-oriented uh, incubator. It's not the same as NSR, Senate, I am Bangalore, because they're a management-oriented piece. So if, if a techie firm comes to NSR, Senate, they would refer them to the Institute of Science or some other partner who's strong in the technical area and can actually provide the kind of support that the startup needs. So your ask has to be something that actually helps the jury decide whether they can actually add value to your uh, efforts. And, and therefore, your ask needs to be very, very clear about that. OK, so uh, here's a slide from one of the teams. OK, and it says, very clearly what they need, what they want from the faculty. Uh, you know, you can even talk about how 
you're being taken into the program. This is your ask. This is your pitch. Well, how will it help you? How will it help me? Why do you need to select me? Please select me. You can add value to me. Your objectives will be met by your selecting me. These are the kinds of messages that you need to put across when you present your ask slide. Okay, so pretty much uh, where we are now, have a closing slide, ask for the questions. You can combine your questions and thank you slide together. Provide information. Okay, here's one from one of our teams uh, giving some information just as a matter of, it reinforces a visual. It, it doesn't ask for questions, but that's something that you might want to do when you develop your own slide. Good. So at this time, I've tried to take you through the AIM model. I've tried to impress upon you why pitching is important and how your major aim in life at this stage is to actually be a great pitcher and get what you want. Okay, and uh, uh, try and work on it. Uh, Tanya, there's a question for you there. Okay, so any other questions that you might have? Uh, so yeah, I will just take this. So uh, Rakhi, uh, we'll try to, we have already updated the pitch decks that you've sent to us and we have huge volumes. So you can update whatever changes professor, ha I mean, whatever you want to update from professor's session, keep it, keep the deck with you. If time permits, we will, we will try to accommodate, but we cannot make any promises not, right now, but you can keep the, inculcate the changes in your deck. Okay, so let's see if we can if we can do that uh, because I think the way it works now is all the all the slides are uploaded right? and to save time you are running the slides right. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, yeah. And they're offline now, or they're available on a web share somewhere. They are available on the web share, uh, and we will be downloading them because we'll we want to be sure that we have a backup ready with us. So, like, if uh, we cannot really keep accommodating and downloading new slides because we have so uh, you know a lot of uh, volume here going on. So, uh, okay. we are trying our best to accommodate everyone's request. So, uh, they can update it in their decks and keep it, and they can talk in if they are not able to like sort of present it. They can always speak about what they took took away from the session. Okay, and there are some other questions coming up, so they will be allowed to share the screen or you're going to put up the, the presentation? Uh, we will be putting up the presentations. Okay, right, so yeah. let's try and work with this guy. Uh, I think the people who are presenting today have a specific uh, uh, shortage of time because they're going, some of them are going on uh, oh, uh, later this afternoon, but then we'll try and be, I think, we have, a, as Tanya said, a very large number of slides to deal with, but we will try and do this. However, uh, try and do your best and work within the norms that you have at the moment. But uh, even otherwise, I think you can update your master decks for future use. And I hope that this session is something that was worth your time. I must apologize. There's so many things we can talk about and we can go on. I've already taken too much of your time and I'm sure that Manveen is having kittens back there uh, trying to figure out how to manage the schedule. So at this point in time, I'll sign off. I'm looking forward to listening to your pitches. I will try Perfect, and give sir. you Sorry. as much. I will try and give you as much uh, uh, feedback as I can. I have one mind and two hands and two eyes, but I will work on it. That's what I do for a living. And uh, at this point, I'll sign off. Thank you all very much for your uh, patience and your perseverance and your energy. And I wish you all the best. Have a great day. Before you sign uh, off, I'm so sorry. Can I just request you to uh, stop your sharing uh, so that I'm able to take a screenshot? We want, we want to just share. Uh, this on okay. our LinkedIn and our uh, social media pages. Okay, I'm going off. Thank you all. Is that okay, Tanya? Uh, you have to stop sharing. That's when we. Uh...
Now, is that better? Okay. I think there is some. Uh, no worries. That's fine. That's fine, Professor. Thank you so much. Uh, that thank you so much for the session, and uh, yeah. yeah, and we shall send across the links as well as uh, as well as the uh, prof the PPT that uh, Professor has shared on email to everybody. We'll share the recording as well. So thank you, everyone. Okay, thank everybody. you. Stay safe. Bye, everybody.